everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh and I'm reviewing the Gap Options Newsletter Subscription 2022 Year to Date Advanced Trader Results. So the win ratio for the letter is 79% and we're at the tail end of June. So we're almost halfway through the year. It's been a very good year. On average, this is our win ratio, but it's been a profitable year as far as return and investment, more so than I think last year, for example, because we've had a lot of large moves this year in stocks and the overall market and a lot of volatility, which has made for great trading. You can always make money in volatility if you're trading the right direction. We've been doing that very often this year. So you figure if you take 10 trades, eight are gonna work, two we're gonna lose. You can trade with a beginner risk. We will talk about that later. It depends on the cash size of your account. The idea is to take it slow if you have a small account. I definitely think that that's something should, people should do. The Gap Options newsletter only has two subscription options, six months, which is $49.99, or 12 months, which is $69.99. So whether you wanna spend five grand or seven, you could be on the letter. Obviously, the one year is a better value. Overall, though, uh, it's a very active letter. This is not long-term investing at all. You are taking the trade, you are getting the momentum, then you are getting out, and you are booking the money. And then, again, I'll probably call another trade because it's an active letter. You're gonna see here, this is a lot, a lot of trades here. So if you have questions or if you would like to sign up for the Gap Options newsletter, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. My phone number is 929-3200-GAP. You can call me. If I don't answer, leave a message. I will return your phone call. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So we're getting into the week before July 4th, actually. It's hard to believe. Um, and we're going to start the beginning of earnings season in July. Now, what's the difference between non-earning season and earnings season? For one, I do. All the picks that we make are based on gaps. It's based on my Golden Gap rating system. That's a class, the Golden Gap course, which I teach once a month. The newsletter is something separate. It's a subscription service. If you wanna take the class and learn, fine. You'll learn how I make the picks. Otherwise, you sign up for the newsletter. I'm going through that process each morning. And then you're getting the newsletters if there's any good quality Golden Gaps. But earnings season is a good time to train gaps because many stocks actually gap on earnings. They gap up, they gap down. This newsletter is calls and puts, just so you know. We do do both. So you're buying the call and selling it, and then you're buying the put and selling it. That is what it is. You do, know have, to, you do have to know how to actually do that in your platform, and you have to set up an options account. And all of that is something that you can go over with your broker. Again, you can trade anywhere that you want to trade. <laughs> you can open up a cash account. You don't even need a margin account to trade options. And I think the minimum is $2,000 to open up an options account. You have to obviously set your risk and the number of trades that you're going to take based on the size of your cash account. If you want to ask me what I think about that, you can always talk to me about that too. But 2022 should be your year to make your dreams come true. Get organized this year. Get solid with your trading. Take a step back so that you can take 10 steps forward because sometimes people are going you know, 100 miles an hour, losing, 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 losing with no end in sight when they're gonna actually make it. It's about taking step by step and getting firm on the ground. You ever hear of that? Where you go and you, you stomp your feet on the ground and you put your feet in the grass so you can feel, you know, uh, the vibration of the earth and feel really like grounded. That's the kind of thing where a lot of people with their trading, they're really not grounded. They're just not grounded at all. For me, what helps to keep me grounded is my process, is the analyzing that I do every morning in the 26 point rating system. I'm not looking for a perfect score on every gap, just so you know. For those of you that have done the class, you know this. I'm looking for 20 points or more. So that's the cutoff, okay? So if I get something that's under 20, consequently then I'm not looking to do it at all. So there are some days when we don't have any options or any trades. And there's some days I may have five trades or six trades, okay? You may not wanna take all the trades. You may not have the money to take all the trades. You do the trades that you can. I often get this question, well, what if I take this one, I don't take that one, and I take the one that doesn't work. If I'm calling six trades a day, chances are most of the time, I'm calling trades with the overall market direction. Therefore, if one's gonna work, 
they're all going to work or if one's going to lose, they're all going to lose. For example, if I call a QQQ and a SPY and a diamonds, that's basically the market, they're very close to the same thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? And again, you can always ask me if you have questions for this as well. But it's time to get focused and get grounded. You've got halfway uh, through the year this year. You've got halfway more to go. You, you've got to sit down and figure out what your goals are and how much time you want to really spend trading. If you don't have a lot of time to mess around and be in the day trading room and trade and be look at charts all day, you might want to do options because you can get the newsletter, get it to your email, you take the trade, put a sell order after you get into it. It's a day order. If it fails you, you're out before four o'clock. If it doesn't, it cancels, you know? If you can't sit and watch all day, you can't. I do put targets in the letter just so you know, okay? You can look at those targets in order to exit the trade or you set a return on investment target of 50%, 100%, or you watch it. You watch the number targets, like I said. So going through the entire stats for the year so far, I'm showing the advanced trader risk results. I'm, I'm, I've gone through so far since this year showing the actual newsletters. I did the whole month of January. If you want to go back on my YouTube, I have it there. And again, it's very time consuming because we've had a lot of trades, but I'm going to try to do that consecutively for the entire year. I'm showing the winners and losers in this PowerPoint and the stats. And I'm going to show you what one of the newsletters looks like when you would get it and go over a couple things here, points that I, that I just discussed. If I am going to show now, between now and the end of the year at some point, basically all the newsletters for the year. It's just very time consuming to do that. And I have many things on my plate. But January's up, okay, if you want to look at it. And I've done it for average uh, results for not just advanced, but beginners too. Uh, because again, if you want to risk a small amount, you certainly can. No one said you have to take more than one contract in a trade. So, so far, 213 winners year to date, 56 losers, four break even trades. The win ratio is 79%. Average advanced trader risk in, the, in this, these totals here, is 8,000 per trade. So you can't lose any more than you risk in an option. Okay, this is not like a swing trade. It's not a trade on margin, just so you know it. So if you buy 10 contracts, all right, and you risk $8,000, you can't lose any more than the 8,000. I hope everyone understands that. If you don't, you can email me questions. Year-to-date results, and again, it's really been a good year. 2,277,995,000. It's, it's been a good year. I mean, you know, and, and, and really it's because of the market. So let's take a look at one of the trades that we did that was just a really nice trade. And this was a recent trade with an expiration date of last week. It was June 17th. I called the SPY 401 puts. And you can see here the time stand. It was sent at 946 on Thursday the night. So I'm usually doing the weeklies. Okay. So here's the chart. Here's the ninth. Okay. So this is, again, this is the SPY. So we opened. I said this a little bit after the open, okay? You do it, you get in, get the drop. Boom, boom, boom. And I just wanna show here, people are always asking, this was not the absolute, absolute, absolute best exit you could have got in this trade because the best exit would have been the last day and I don't really think it makes sense to hold all the time to the last day. You're up a lot of money in this, a good exit. You know, you don't wanna mess up the trade. So this was an exit of 613 on the over here into this drop. Okay. We're on the spy. So 575 cost 15 contracts risk 8625 sold at $36 profit, 45,375, return on investment, 526%. Again, I don't know what this was into the drop here. I do know that the 409s all the way down here, it didn't quite get to 360 the last day, but it was almost 50 points, almost 50 points through the strike. So, you know, you can do the math. I mean, and, and this is not like something that we do trades like this with a 500 some percent return investment every day, but I absolutely do call trades like this. And it is the benefit of being on the newsletter. 
And I'm very good at reading directional bias. And it's because of my rating system, again, which I teach in the Golden Gap course. That 26 point rating system helps me see when the market's going to rally or a stock or when it's going to fall and drop. Okay. So, again, a put, let's go back here, is what this was, is basically a short. Okay. Here's when the market sold off. And again, that was last week. We'll see where we go here yet this week. But this is what the newsletters look like, just so you know. So a really nice trade. So what if you had risked one contract, spent $575? I mean, it still was a huge trade. But you can see here how you don't need to spend a lot of money to make money in options. You absolutely, absolutely can do trades. And you can make money in trades with a small risk, whether it's 500 whether it's a thousand, okay. Oh, here, I have this in here for the beginner. So this was the beginner risk. Two contracts of a risk of 11.50, sold at $36, profit 6,050. There you go. So you can see how you could take a $5,000 account, build it up to 10, take a $10,000 account, build it up to 20. And that is what you should do. Baby step it, baby step it. So again, there was a lot of trades this year over 200 trades so far called this year. If you don't want to do them all, you don't. And again, you may not feel comfortable being in five things at once. Sometimes the trades take a little bit while to go. And if you're not comfortable being in multiple trades past the night, going to bed overnight, then you can only be in one or two things at a time, whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh, I want to go back to one thing here. Let me go back to the chart. One of the advantages of doing what I do, learning what I do, and also becoming a newsletter subscriber to the Gap Options newsletter is capturing the overnight moves in stocks and the market when you're ready in the trade, and then it goes into the gap in the next morning. You're already in it. You took it, you're in it, and you get a massive overnight move, which is what happened with this here. What do I mean? We closed here, gap down, fell. Closed here, gap down, fell. So when you get the overnight jump, okay, that really is how you get that massive momentum. And I'm very good at calling trades like this. So, you know, doing this in this manner and having the perfect time to entry, which we did on the night, you know, it's, it's really one of these things where, again, you could have held it the last day, but no matter when you took it the first day and you got out the first day, the second day, the third day, it was a profitable trade up until the end. So... It's the overnight moves though that are so beneficial and where you can really see the dollar signs. And it actually makes it you know, really fun to trade, quite frankly. Um, okay, so getting back to the beginning of the year. So a lot of nice trades in here. We did the Q's, Tesla, Spy, Netflix was a really big one. This is to start off the year. We were doing the market early this year. Um, that Spy there didn't work, but we were, raring to go in the market early in January. And we've had a lot of volatility even going back to January now. It's hard to believe because it's June, but this has been going on all year, people. NVIDIA, we did Facebook, which is now Meta. Netflix was a nice trade. What should your expectation be? I think 50% is a good profit. I think you should try for 100% in every trade, but some of the trades were 200, 300, 400, 500% of whatever you risk. Again, you have to be comfortable holding things sometimes overnight. That's something that you have to get used to. The Qs, again, a nice trade. If you're risking 8,000, 9,000 is a good profit. What if it keeps going? Chances are I'll call another trade. And again, if you're gonna do a Q and a SPY, maybe you, you get them, you take them, one goes, the other one goes, get out of one, hold the other. Or you take two contracts, book one contract, hold the other overnight. Or if you're taking 10, get out of five, hold five, you know? Apple was a nice trade. Spy was a nice trade. Q's lost there. Netflix was a winner. Tesla lost. Spy won then. Amazon did not work. Facebook was a big winner. Netflix, this is all the Netflix earnings in there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trades. Uh, huge trades in the market this year. Spy, 51,500. This is a risk, again, of average 8,000. Q's 39.6. And again, this is not an exact science. So you may take a trade, say your risk is 1,000, it's okay to risk 1,100 or 900. What, what you shouldn't do, if your average risk is 1,000, risk three or 2,200. You have to be within the range. It's extremely important to do that. Spry profit 16.8, QQQ's 15.4. 
Goldman Sachs, that really didn't work out right. Unfortunately, it was a winner, but not much. Spy was a winner, two spies. Sometimes I'll stack them. I'll stack them like I'll call, you know, one strike, two strike, three strikes, lower strikes. You can do the cheaper one if you want. Um, because if they're going to work, they're all going to work in the same direction in the timing. Amazon was a big winner, 20400 Diamond, 6750 I don't always do the diamonds, but sometimes. Sometimes we do. And, and that's not, and that uh, index can move. Facebook, 7,200 Qs, 11,5, 11,250. Spy was a big winner, 40,600. These trades or these cost of these options has increased this year. They fluctuated up and down, but they're definitely more expensive, the, the market puts that we've been doing it recently than earlier in the year. Netflix, 18,6, 16,8, Q, 16,2, Spy for 22,6. Apple was a little one, 5,500, SPY 7,500, Q's 4,200, SPY was a loss. Now, what about losers? So you can kill it if it's down half, if that's what you want to do. So if you risk 1,000, it's down 50%, you can kill it. If you have a small account, you want to do that, fine. However, I will say, if the time is still on in the trade, so say it, it, it's down 50%, I call it on a Monday, it's down, you kill it, this trade could go till go, it could go. It could go by Friday. You've got plenty of time left. So I really think people should size themselves conservatively to the lower end so they can play every trade out. The trains that I am I lost in full, you can see that I, they just they just expired the day of expiration. They never went right for me. Or I, was, was, I wasn't up enough to get out, and then I didn't get out. It was positive a little, and then I didn't. It flipped against me. Or maybe it never went in my direction, but I didn't kill it. If there's something where I lost a portion, like this spy... And there's other ones in here with the losses that are less than the full amount. I ran them into the last day and, and, and saved whatever I could. And they just never went right for me. So I think winning or playing every trade to win or lose is actually going to give you the best results. But you've got to have the cash to do those trades and be able to hold them because you might take a trade on a Monday that's down. And if you can't stomach watching it every day, you can't take anything else, you're in the trade, it's dead until it comes back around again. If it does, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then you have to manage them by killing them if you want but i will tell you that some trades go the last day with me that happens it happened two weeks ago or three weeks ago whenever we were doing some they came back the very last day they, they completely came back positive trades they were down all week came back the last day so i mean you know i'm just letting you know like this is how it is the way that i'm looking at it looking at the chart and reading the gap so we're playing momentum people that is what this is BA was a winner. Apple was a winner. Microsoft, another nice one. We haven't done that a lot this year. MCD did not work. I was regretting doing that, actually. BA didn't work out. Q's lost. Spy lost. Facebook was a winner, 32.8. Spy lost and UPS was a little winner. There are some weeks where things don't work out. So, like, this was a losing couple of days here. You can see, you can see the stats here. So, of the course of 52 weeks in a year, again... Even at an 80% win ratio or 79% win ratio, you're going to have a week here and there that nothing's going to work and you're going to lose that week. So whether you decide to take three trains and you're losing in three that week or five, you're going to be able to suffer through it until the downturn when the trades then work again. Because there's more trades that work that don't. But usually the way that I call trades, again, typically with the market if the market doesn't cooperate on that particular week, then nothing's going to work right. Unless it's a particular specialty gap, which actually this Facebook was that week. But it still was a bunch of trades that did not work out right on that particular week. So that's why you can't oversize yourself either. But you definitely have to take advantage of all the weeks we've had 100% win ratio, which is just so many this, this year. PayPal worked. We did two tickers. Netflix was a winner. Facebook was a winner. Q Spy, little Qs there. Again, when there's a small profit in something, it's usually because I'm running it into the last day and didn't really go huge at all before the Friday. I'm only like holding the last day if it's down or not up that much. Facebook was a winner. Apple lost in full. Spy was a winner. Qs were a winner. Amazon was a winner. Netflix was a winner. Facebook big winner, huge trade in PayPal. I have to go back and look at that. Q's was a winner, spy, spy, Q's, a little bit of a loss in the diamonds. Facebook won two trades, Q's, spy, Microsoft, 
we've had just huge trades in the market this year. Big Spy and Tesla too. Really big trades in Tesla. They're expensive. If you cannot do them because of the cost, then you take it off the list. Amazon used to be very expensive, then the stock split. Now it's very playable for people with smaller accounts, which is nice for people because the stock still has good moves, not moves like it used to at a higher price point, but it, the stock still has a lot of volume, momentum, and can move and still pay. Facebook, 12,000. Netflix, 20,300. Winner in the queues, winner in the spy, another winner in Tespa, Facebook spy. See, again, you can see here where I'm calling trades like usually in a group, in a grouping where I'm seeing the market's going to go up or the market's going to go down, and then we're doing, you know, puts or calls depending on the market direction. And if the one goes, they all go. Again, another winning week. Q's one, Apple, BA, spy, Q's, another PayPal. I was on top of that PayPal for a while when that was dropping. I haven't looked at that lately. I, I got to go back and look at that. And then the QQQ 7125. Then these two were bust. Bust in full, blew out the last day, Apple and Q's. Again, if you want to kill something when it's down a certain portion, that's up to you. Spy was a bust too. BA 5400, Facebook 12,000, Diamond's a little one. Q's was okay, that didn't fully go. Spy lost, Apple lost in full. Two good ones in BA. PayPal again, I mean, it's just... When I, when I find something, and this is again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just right on top of something. We did that with Netflix. We did that with the PayPals. Years ago, we were doing that with BYND, but I haven't played that for a while. Like, and, and that was actually, we were doing calls and that, huge trades in that. It was a couple of years ago. I forget if it was, I want to say it was 2019, summer 2019. BA315. Diamonds was a winner, JPM was a winner, Q's was a winner, Spy was a winner, Facebook was a winner, PayPal was a winner, Microsoft was a winner. You know, again, for every time there's a losing week, you, you just have to grin and bear it or bite the bullet because, you know, the way that I call trains, there could be, you know, 10 weeks in a row where there's all winners, you know. And so this is why you have to come to some kind of conclusion where you can live with the amount of size that positioning size that you're having with the trade or how many you want to be in at one time. Spy was a winner. Q's was a winner. BA was a big winner. Facebook was a winner. QQQ's was a winner. Spy and Microsoft too. Another winning streak here. Amazon was a winner. Spy, Spy, CVX, huge winner. That Chevron. Actually, when we did that was a nice winner. Those were calls. Another CVX, Q's was break even. Netflix was a winner. Facebook lost. Q's break even. Spy lost in those two. BA was a little one, and Q's worked too. The Spy did not work. CVX again. Microsoft winner, NVIDIA winner. Q's lost. Apple lost. And CVX again. BA won. Spy lost. FDX lost. I remember that one. That was annoying that FDX didn't work. JPM lost. BA lost. CVX won. QQQ was a winner. CVX won. Adobe won in the first trade. The second one did not win. CVX won. A little one in XOM. We haven't done that for a while. Spy lost. Q's lost. BA lost. NVIDIA lost. So that was a, a period there where things weren't working in our favor. Golden was a little winner. And then Netflix, Q, CVX, and Q's all lost that week. Then we were back on a hot streak. Hot to trot. Spy winner, 19-2. Facebook winner. CVX won. Zoom. Q's. Netflix. Q's. Again, winner, 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 winner. Q's won. Apple was break even. Big winner in the Q's. Twitter was a winner. BA. 2BA. Spy. When I get in a roll, I really can get in a roll. And, and what I found, you know, with people is, then people don't size themselves. Again, if I call 32 trades in a row that are winners, people stop sizing themselves, and then the 33rd trade loses, and they don't size themselves. You can't do that. You have to think about your risk in sizing every trade. You've got to do that, even if I'm on a hot streak. You know, I mean, you have to be responsible for the amount of risk that you're taking per trade. Amazon was a winner, Q's was a winner, Netflix was a winner, Diamonds lost, Spy won, Facebook won, and BA lost. Q's was a winner, SPY, big one in the Facebook. I have not traded that since it became meta. I have to look at that chart. Q's was a winner, Microsoft, SPY. Amazon was a little guy. Google, big one. QQQ's was a winner, 56, 25, 6,000. Again, sometimes I'll stack the strikes. 
You don't have to do both if you don't want to, okay? Spy was a winner, Facebook big winner, Google big winner, Netflix another hot streak here. Netflix winner, Disney we did. I don't know why that Tesla didn't work. I don't remember that, why that didn't work. Everything else worked this week. Netflix, Qs, another Qs, another big spy. Twitter failed, that one I remember. Qs won, Google lost, little Q, Microsoft BA, Netflix, again, that was just running into the end of the week. Amazon won, Qs won, Spy won, Diamonds won, Qs break even. Spy was a small loss and the Amazon worked. eBay was a nice gap. Netflix was another big winner. Qs was another big winner. Spy, Amazon again, Spy, Qs. Again, winning week, winning week, winning week. BA was a huge winner. I do remember that one. QQQs, 20,800. Spy, NVIDIA, Facebook, Amazon, Qs. I mean, again, you you can come to some kind of say, okay, I'm in three things. Two are up. The other one's up, but I think the other one's going to go. Get out of the two that are up, hold the one to get to a bigger move, a bigger return on investment. You know what I mean? Walmart was one, and we didn't get to this here that I did, and I got out the day that it, that it, that it went, and I thought it was fine to do that. It ended up being a massive trade, like, I don't know, six, 700% return on investment or something. I did not get that whole thing. It's, you have to like kind of pick and choose. You can't hold everything to a piggy target. Again, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it out. That's the way you're gonna make money. That's the way you're gonna build your account. Oh, here, this was the week. I was just talking about it. It, it was a fine trade, but it ended up being a massive mover, which you wouldn't have known. You, you see the trade, you're up, it's almost 100%. The day you take it, you get out, boom. When you're in a trade and you're up money, it's never over to the fat lady sings and you book the money. Anything can turn around the next day. That's number one. Number two, you know, just because you have more time in something, it doesn't mean you should hold it. You got to know that too. Target earnings were that night and I didn't know how they report. As it turns out, it helped the Walmart go, but I didn't know that. You don't know that. Nobody knows that before the earnings, what they're going to say or how the stock's going to react. So the conservative exit was the day of. But take the profit, never look back. It was a solid trade the first day. Q's was a winner. Target was a winner. Then we did that one. Spy, Amazon, this other Q and Spy did not work. That's by Q's, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and BA lost. That was a losing week then. Then we did CVX again. This was, the, this was all the same week. NVIDIA, Spy, CVX, Alta. Oh, that Alta was ridiculous. That Alta should have worked. So this, all of these was one week that didn't work. Target was a big one then, 15.6. Q's, winner, BA, 62.50. Actually, I want to look at that all too. too. Then we did Walmart again, winner, Microsoft winner, Apple winner, Tesla, little loser. Again, running into the last day. QQQ's was a winner. Walmart was a big winner. Spy was a huge winner. Target was a huge winner. Q's was a good winner, Diamonds winner, Netflix winner, Amazon winner, Spy, Q's, Tesla. Let's look at Alta. I don't remember that day, but I'll remember it when I see the chart here. Yep. Yep. Oh, I remember that sucker. This was a call. We did calls in this. And it, and, it, and it started to look like it was going to go. And it was up at one point, actually. But again, I just, you know, it ran out of time. And then because of the market fell, and I'm just looking at this here. I mean, it's actually a beautiful chart. I talked about it. I talked about it. I talked about it. I talked about it. This is a really strong chart. Again, we did calls in this. If it wouldn't be for the market this would have ran up would have been a brand new ultima high wouldn't want took off like a rocket it was here we did it here close here gapped up and again if you got out of it at some point you could have maybe get out of it with some money i don't know what the highest percentage it would have been but it wasn't it was nowhere near 100 percent. i'll tell you that anyways this is a nice chart it's just you know the market has been taking a beating and where the market goes so goes everything So anyways, an advanced trader risk is 8,000, or anything really, in my opinion, over five. You know, intermediate's probably three to four. You know, 500 to 1,000 is more a beginner level. 1,500, I think, is, is even a good risk. You can make money with that. So you can make money with a beginner risk. 
And again, you can ask me what I think about this. The benefit of trading options with a small account, if you do want to take a smaller risk, is that you don't need to set up a margin account, okay? And you can open up a cash account, and you only pay the cost of the trade. You don't have to worry about necessarily the price of the stock having to trade it on margin. Talk to your broker, ask questions. There's many brokers out there, shop them around. But you can trade and make money on the side doing options on the side. And you do not have to take my Golden Gap course in order to do the newsletter or sign up for the newsletter. So that is totally up to you. I encourage everyone to learn. I think learning the system and the rating system is very important, but not everyone wants to take the time to do a two-day weekend class. Some people just want the trade ideas. So if you decide you want to take the class, I do teach it once a month. It does teach a 26-point rating system that I use to make the calls. If you want to sign up for the newsletter, 12 months is $69.99. Everyone pays the same price. Six months is $49.99. It's six months. So half annual or annual, no prerequisites, no trials. Please don't ask me. The letter is like gold. The letter is worth $69.99 for one year. It is worth really so much more. I mean, I just went over all the winners and losers in here. And again, if you're willing to play everything to win or lose, that's how you're going to see the best results. If you want to sign up, you can sign up today. You get tomorrow's trades. It's not like there's any time period. It's not the first of the month, whatever. You can sign up whenever you want, and you can immediately start getting the newsletters. And again, it's it's been a good start to this year. We're halfway through. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. If you're interested in upcoming classes, you can always go to the website, www.thestockswish.com, see what classes I have for June and July. And if you want to email me, you can email me too. I will tell you when the classes are. The class is a two-day class, Saturday and Sunday. I always do in the weekend because during the week I'm busy with the market. So during the weekends, I can focus on trading. I mean, not teaching. During the week, we focus on trading. Class tuition is $69.99. And then if you want to do the combo, it includes the trends class, which is $74.99. That's a half-day class on long-term trends, and I think that's beneficial for options too. So if you'd like more information, definitely, definitely, definitely reach out. If you want to take the class, I urge everyone to do that to learn. But there's quite a number of people in the letter, actually, that have been in the letter for years and never taken the class. In fact, I was thinking of one gentleman. I haven't heard from him for a while. He renews every year. Every year he renews. He has never taken the Golden Gap class. He has been on the newsletter since I started it. I want to say I started the newsletter in 2015. So it's seven years. He's never taken the class. I mean, one day he's got to take the class. I, I'm shocked that he hasn't, but he's making money with the options newsletter. And every year he pays and every year he renews and he's never done the class. So, you know, it's been seven years. You don't have to do it. I think it's helpful. And then you're going to know what I'm looking at. And quite frankly, people that have been trading for a long time and are not doing well sometimes need that foundation. If you're someone that says, I think this girl knows what she's talking about, um, and you use good money management, again, with my win ratio at 79%, you can make money without even knowing the system at all. You know, So clearly, there are people that are doing extremely well that have never taken the class. It really depends on your personality and what you need. You know, some people need that foundation. Some people don't, you know. Anyways, any questions, feel free to email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. If you're interested in signing up, I wouldn't wait. It's been a good, good period here. Have a good night, everyone.